my birthday. It's my birthday. Guys, happy Vlogmas. It's day 22. Do you know how I know it's day 22? 22 is my favorite number because I was born on December 22nd. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. You should never be too old to be happy about your birthday because you know what? We've survived one more year on this earth. Just the very mere fact that we are here, the odds, like, that is pretty darn amazing. So I am excited today. I've already started my day. Came in a little bit early because I had to finish off a few things for some pickups that are coming into the shop today. Some husbands picking up some things for their wives. I went next door, I grabbed my coffee. I love this little thermos. I got this when I was in Texas this summer in San Antonio, Texas. And um, <laughs> this was my souvenir to myself. Feed me tacos and tell me I'm pretty. Now if we can just come out with some keto tacos. Let me work on that for you. I'm pretty sure I've seen some cheese shells. Matt, I'm gonna need your help. Isn't this cute? Yesterday, Carrie gave this to me. It is a sock monkey Santa. Oh, you guys know I've always been collecting sock monkeys. In fact, that is something me and Matt have always, whoo, 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 whoo. We have always had in common. We do love the sock monkey. We do love the junk monkey. Oh, isn't he cute? So we got happy mail, happy mail, and I am excited because you know what, I'm thinking today on Vlogmas we should do a project together. So you know me, I'm Stencil Sonia. Love me a stencil. I've been stenciling since, I don't know, I don't know, since the, the moon was in the sky. I love me some stencils and I'm excited because my friends over at Stencil Revolution, Stencil Revolution, sent me this package just in time for Christmas. All right, let's take a look here. They are a small company, and I love working with other small companies. Ooh, what do we have? No way. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at this. Oh, rustic, boho, shabby. Oh, my name. Oh, my goodness. I love it, and you guys know that I am somebody who loves. Listen, I've tried a lot of stencils in my day, and I'm going to tell you right now, my day, because listen, today's my birthday, and I've been around for a long time. But I have tried a lot of stencils in my time as a creative, and I keep going back to just the hard plastic ones. Because you know what? I don't wash them. I'm a low maintenance girl. I have ruined so many of those stickable, stick down ones. They rip the paint off. I'm, you know, all the adhesive is different consistencies. There are so many reasons why I don't like any other stencil that's out there other than these hard plastic ones. Okay, so I digress. But look, this is gorgeous. Oh, who else loves that truck? We might do this one today. What do you think? What do you think? Oh my lord. All right, so there's that. Leopard spots. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is going to be fun. Leopard or cheetah? Leopard or cheetah? This is always the question. Let me see. Let me see what they call them. They call them leopard print. Okay, leopard print. Okay, we're good to go. We're good to go. All right, now that we know, because we're going to follow whatever they call them. Okay, I've got to paint something with this as well. This is going to be a fun one. I love how on the back it says, we create the highest quality stencils at the best prices for happy customers all around the world. Made in sunny Florida. And I'm going to put my link below as well, guys. I would love it if you would use my link and support me. And uh, when you order, what happens is if, if you order more than $30, you get free shipping. Hello. And remember, when you do these, this is a nice heart. Like, I love their the thickness of their stencils. Keep them forever and ever. Amen. To use over and over again. So listen, I've gotten some napkins that you guys have sent me in as Happy Mail that have some like really, really rustic, you know, roosterish pigs, that sort of thing, napkin designs, and I'm really thinking that could be a good design as well, using the style of a napkin and then pairing this with this, I don't know. Let's see, I'll, it'll be a surprise, which stencil I create with today. Which one are you voting for? Rustic, animal farm stack, leopard print, because we know it's leopard, Boho shabby, oh my gosh. Or Christmas tree uh, on a truck, which, hello, Santa's coming in tonight, tonight, not really, we all know that, but that's just a song I used to send to my son. I used, used to sing to him when he was really, really young and he used to watch SpongeBob, yeah. And so many, Matt will, me and Matt and I will never get hours back that we watched the SpongeBob, but I have to tell you that um, I still sing this song to him and now he's 18. And just for fun, I will still like to sing my Santa's Coming Tonight Tonight uh, song right before Christmas. And so it's like <coughs> stuck in my brain. Let's see what we make and create today. What we make 
and create today. I don't even want to take my hat off today. I came in, it's like chilly outside. You know when your, your brain just gets warm and you just feel like you're in a sweatshirt and just like the right snug of a hat and you just feel perfect? Like I can't let take this off and let all that heat, is, heat escape. It just, anyway, I'm wearing the hat. I think for the first off thing I'm gonna do is grab a piece of some really, really pretty like designer paper. This of course comes with my scrapbooking um, kit of the month. You guys know that every month the scrapbookingstore.com sends me out a kit and I'll put that link below if you want to be save 10% off the kit and uh, every month have some beautiful scrapbooking supplies sent to you. It's always dual sided, which is really nice. So this is acorns, which is kind of like fallish, winterish, but honestly on this side, it's just some distressed wood and I love some distressed wood. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this on some brownie frowny wood. So hey, if you can't, you know, you can always use my plank finish that you'll find right here on YouTube and do something crazy with it. But sometimes if it's on the paper, you can just make use of that too. You don't want the, the edges hanging out. So I tried to do mine like a little bit on the inside um, and if you use something that is just pattern, it makes it super easy to be able to work with. All right, let's go ahead. So when I do this now, I cut inside the lines just so I'm not going to have paper hanging out over that wooden block. Because that ain't no fun. You could sand it off, but why would you? Just be smart. Think about it now before you even do it, right? So let's cut this off. Look at all these cute acorns. Makes me want to paint some acorns. That's how I get inspiration. I see something and I go, oh, I should paint some of those. You know, so I could decide which background I want for this, but I'm going to go with this one. It fits perfectly. Look how nice it fits. Look how nice it fits. And now that block, you get it on there just right. And now that block, like, totally takes on different shape, right? And I, I want that little edge right there because I'll show you what I do in just a second. We cover that up, of course. But let's go ahead and stick this down. So I'm gonna grab some of my Mod Podge. Let's go ahead and squirt a whole bunch out there. And then we're gonna make sure we wipe it all over. So here's the thing with Mod Podge. If you're trying to avoid bubbles and things like that, you wanna make sure you got lots down because bubbles form not only when air gets trapped in the, underneath the paper, but also if your paper is not being pulled down evenly. So uh, actually a good trick is to swipe all in one direction and then swipe all in the other direction and really fill out those pores um, of your wood. Make sure they're being hit. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put the paper on, right? Let's see here. All right. Now, once you put the paper on, okay, the paper is down. Then what I'm going to do is grab this handy dandy tool that I got at the dollar store. It's actually a squeegee for a buck because I'm a girl who likes to create, make things beautiful on a budget. You nice, see how nice and wide that is? So basically, I'm going to scrape it all over. Any Mod Podge excess just flings out to the side, but I'm starting in the middle and I'm pulling out to the edges, all right? Because what last thing I want to do is get air trapped. So if we pull it from the middle to the outside, what it does is air gets released. Yay, and I don't know about you, but I do my best so I can have nice, flat paper decorations. So this is a great tool. I just happened to come across it, and um, I've been using this for years. And I've held paint parties, so I have like, I will invest in a ton of these for my paint parties. All right, like that, like beautiful, 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 nice and flat. Do you see how it like, basically it, it just makes, makes the Mod Podge lay nice and flat. So that's a great tip for you. Now this plain Jane piece of wood is looking marvelous. But let's go ahead and put some on the top as well because the, basically your paper is being pulled down from the bottom, but now I'm gonna sandwich in that paper with some more on the top. My paper's in between, Mod Podge dries clear, and what it's gonna do is actually saturate the paper and then continue to pull it down into the wood. So again, just get a nice bunch of Mod Podge on the top to help make your paper stick down. And if there's any little hairs, get them now. Get them now, because we don't want them drying in our glue. All right, perfect. All right, let's make sure we let that dry. And again, I don't like to force my Mod Podge because it can turn to be like, if you force glue to dry, then you're kind of like, you know, you're, you're playing with the glue gods. And you know what, let's just keep them happy and let them eat grapes and slowly dry on their own time frame, and then we'll be back. I'm gonna go drink some coffee, say hello to Matt for a little bit, and then I'll be right back. All right, so our paper is all nice and dry. I love it. Instantaneous plank wood. All right, so 
I have decided that because with this size of plank wood that I have, that the perfect thing to put on this is gonna be this guy, except I can't stack them all because they would be off my plank, right? So just a reminder that when you do have a stencil, you don't have to make use of everything. Maybe you just wanna put that cute little cow right there just like that. So let's do that. Let's put our little cow and, or we could do the cow and a pig. Let's do the cow and the pig because we can do that. So now what we're gonna do is just kinda like make sure that they are in the space where we need them to be. Somebody who definitely loves shabby primitive would be into a pig and a cow, right? All right, so what we're gonna do is go ahead, I'm gonna use my black velvet. So I love to use, like, you know, the, my background doesn't have a, a ton of black into it because it's more like brown planked wood, but it does have what looks like the creases, those dark creases that I love to be able to paint and create to make it look like it's been old and aged, right? So we're gonna pick up on a little bit of that black and basically do our stencil with this. We're gonna use our shabby chip brush into our chalky style paint. Of course, our chalky style paint is nice. You're gonna find that it's, I like it chunky, just like this little piggy right here, okay? We like it chunky. And it enables us to be able to stencil beautifully, but at any given time, if you ever feel that you want to change the consistency of our paint, it's made in such a way with such integrity that you can add a little bit of water and make it more fluid, whatever floats your boat. Okay, he has horns, Matt. If a cow has horns, is he still a cow? I ain't no farm girl, right? I was born on the ocean. I'm an island girl, remember? The mermaid that moved inland. Ooh, it's gonna be beautiful. You ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll lay this to the side, let this dry. Just always let your stencils dry flat and then put them into your stencil book. And by stencil book, you know what I'm talking about, right? If you're, you are new to my videos here, you need to get yourself a stencil book to collect all your stencils in. Let me show you mine real quick. So this is my stencil book right here. I will put the link below as well. It is an art portfolio, but is, it is the kind of art portfolio, heart art portfolio, oh boy, it's hard to say that this morning, that um, it has big, big pages, so it's perfect size for all the stencils, for all the stencils, all the things, all the time, but it actually has dual-sided pages, so you can put like, you can make use of both pages, like a pocket, and it has like this little insert into it as well that you can pull out if you really need to. I keep mine in there so I can see like my stencil showing through and really be able to see the design, but also if you're somebody who has stickable stencils, which I do as well in my stash, I'm just not a big fan of them, so you don't see me use them too often. You can actually stick them right on the outside as well, so that way um, you can get everything. Like this one right here, for example, is a sticky stencil. I got it from Hobby Lobby right here with the feathers, and right now it's inside, but it's actually stickable, so if I wanted to, I could put it outside as well, but I've just stuck it on something and put it into the folder. This is a great way, so when you're finding stencils, you have a pl place to store them and keep them, okay? It's like a collection. So one of the things I love to collect are stencils, and so I just, you know, I'm gonna store it, let this dry, put it back into here, and uh, right now, I think on Amazon, you can Amazon Prime yourself one, and they're somewhere around $14.99, and it is one of the very best investments I have ever, ever made in my business for myself. So I have multiple of them. This is just looking absolutely fabulously fine. All right, so now you know what I love to do though, right? We love to give it a little bit of a, a frame. I call it here the junk monkey, the eyeliner effect. And this is where you basically put your wing liner and you frame out that photo and you do your edging. So we're gonna take our shabby chip brush, we're gonna put it on the side. You can bring your frame, your edging in with that eyeliner effect as far as you want. That's totally up to you. We're covering up that little paper edge. Remember, it's better to have your paper inside than hanging out over your project space. And honestly, you can swipe this, you can round out the edges of the corners, you know, really play with it. Oh yeah. Shabby, gorgeous. All right, now I need to let this dry. Isn't, aren't they looking cute? So I'm gonna use my favorite brush, the Poly. These are on our website. It gives you a nice finish with your Poly. I use these as well if I want ever want all over full coverage with paint as well. And then of course my shabby brushes when I want the distressed effect. But if you're gonna do these brushes, they are so awesome. Save one just for your Poly, like so it stays just in perfect shape because you work just so nice and light with your Poly brush. You want to keep the bristles together just nice and perfect. And uh, when you use our banana peel, because it's water-based, you can just wash it out and then you're good to go. So light brush strokes 
all over and not touch it too much, right? So this actually will work fine with the Mod Podge, and in fact, it's even gonna give it more of a, more of a seal. So, all right, let me just get that nice and even, and we're good to go. Don't touch it, walk away, let it dry nice and crystal clear. All right, and Moo Cow and the Piggy is done, and I just put them out here, ooh, with those red roses. These are my favorite velvet roses. I've been staging my stuff with these for years, and they're kind of like something that I will never sell. sell. They always stay around my studio. But, ah, uh, love, 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 aren't they cute looking? Super cute, this would be a really, really quick gift for somebody, and uh, I love the fact that we didn't have to draw that paper, that, again, just making use of something that already exists to make your life a whole lot easier and to be able to make something beautiful, make it quick. And uh, this is this will be a beautiful gift for somebody. I love, 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 love. So I am loving how that turned out. What do you guys think? Give me a heart, tell me what to think about that. Leave me a comment below. Will you try it? Did you learn some good tips today? So it is day 22 of Vlogmas. Now is the time that I go ahead and announce the winner from yesterday. We put up 20 big bananas, $20 in banana bucks that's good to use uh, over at our website at junkmonkeypaint.com and I have a winner, Chris Reynolds. Hello, Christy Reynolds, you are my winner today. She says, oh my, that cheese crusted meatloaf looked good. So if you're just joining us, go back to watch yesterday's vlog where Matt took us in the kitchen with him and he shared with us some amazing secrets to make like the most delectable meatloaf ever. You've got to try it. Hands down, best meatloaf ever. So she's got a few things up her sleeve. She says, oh my, that cheese crusted meatloaf looks so good. I had leftover warm meatloaf last night as well. But she says, my favorite to make is surprise meatloaf. Making two halves, two halves, and in the middle between the two layers, oh my gosh, it just keeps getting better. She likes to put a layer of sliced mushrooms and cheese or pepperoni. I never thought about that before. And cheese or even black olives and cheese. All right, Christy, I'm going to be trying this because this sounds absolutely amazing. I'm even thinking about like mini meatloaves. How good would that be in like muffin cups using your idea of the two halves and just sticking something in there? Get in there. Get in there. Mm, get in my belly. All right, Christy, so you know what you have to do, girl. Just email me at junkmonkeypaint at gmail.com. Put winner, winner in the subject line and do it within 24 hours as of the timestamp of this video being posted here on YouTube. I'll be waiting for you. And let's throw up another 20 big bananas because we are on a roll and Santa Claus is coming to town. So let's go ahead and throw in another 20 big bananas for somebody out there. And today's question for you is, what is your favorite animal? I wanna know what your favorite animal is, right? Is it a cow? Is it a chicken? Or is it a moose, a llama, is it a cat? Is it a dog? I could be here forever. You know what I mean. So let's have some fun. Tell me what your favorite animal is. Comment below. So to be part of the Vlogmas gift, 20 big bananas, that's up for grabs. You have to make sure you are subscribed to this channel, like this video, give it a thumbs up, and also make sure you comment below with your answer. Send me some love and talk to me. And make sure you don't forget to hit the little bell. What that does is it notifies you every time we do another upload, another vlog here on YouTube. And there are so many more to come. And don't forget to do something creative today, will ya?